That's it. The best football show. Uh, subscribe to it. Like it. Download it. Uh, go to wherever you get your podcast from. This is the Odyssey channel right here. Just wherever you can get your free Odyssey uh, podcast, wherever you get those. And just download it, like, and subscribe to it. I'm Brian Baldinger at Baldy NFL. Back in my third floor film room here at NFL Films. Beautiful Mount Laurel, New Jersey, where I just returned from the Jets. Was up there all morning. Uh, taping some shows and doing some breakdowns. And um, look, I listen to Jet fans. I'm up there. I'm probably be at next Thursday night's game against Houston. And I get it. You know, Jet fans are disappointed and writing the team off. And I understand. But I just want to say one thing. I played on a team in Indianapolis one year in uh, 1988. And we started one and five. It was disappointing. Every bit as disappointing as what we've seen from the Jets. We were better than one and five. And I don't know what happened, but it happened. We started turning things around and we won eight of our next 10 games to get to nine and seven. It was a 16 game schedule then. And on the week, the final week of the season, we played the Buffalo Bills and we won. That was a one o'clock window. And when we won, we finished nine and seven. And by all the permutations that were out there then, we were in the playoffs. But in the four o'clock window, I think Cleveland played Houston. One of those teams won and knocked us out of the playoffs. So we didn't make it. But we finished strong. Um, I, it's a week-to-week league. You never know when somebody is going to turn it around. Uh, it, anybody's life can change in an instant. You can change a behavior in an instant. You can be a chain smoker your whole life and stop. It can change in an instant. The Jets have played terrible football. They've looked poorly coached. They beat themselves. They're their own worst enemy. All that stuff is true. You can say Aaron Rodgers is too old. You can say whatever you want to say through the first seven games. And you're not going to be wrong. But they just signed Hassan Reddick this week. And, you know, look, I've known Hassan a long time. He's literally right from Haddon Township, right? Went to high school in Haddon Township, not 15 minutes from where I'm at right now. Um, he's, a, he's a really good player. He could be a game changer. He was two years ago when the Eagles went to the Super Bowl. And I always say, if you want to be a great pass rushing team, like the New York Giants lead the league in sacks, believe it or not, with 32. Dexter Lawrence leads the league with nine. You know, Brian Burns, uh, Aziz Ojolari, or Kayvon Thibodeau. They've got three guys. Every good team that rushes the passer well with a front four has three great rushers. Right now, the Jets have two. You know, they lost Jermaine Johnson. They uh, they allowed Bryce Huff to go in free agency. So a lot of the things that made them successful as a, as a front a year ago are gone. But they signed, you know, they traded for Hassan Reddick on the day of the draft, and he didn't report and hasn't played. Haven't seen him until today when he practices. And if Hassan Reddick is in shape, and he'll have fresh legs, he'll have a good takeoff. He's a good football player. He's an every down player. He plays the run. He knows how to use his hands. He has awareness. Hassan's a good football player. Really good. Um, you know, the guy had 19 and a half sacks and six forced fumbles two years ago. Um the guy, the guy can play. So if you put Hassan Reddick opposite Will McDonald, who's second in the league with eight sacks, with Quinn and Williams in the middle, they have three guys that can get home. And not just get to the quarterback, but they can affect the quarterback. Because the Jets have two takeaways the whole year. They haven't recovered a fumble. They've got two interceptions by Brandon Eccles. If they want to turn things around, they need to do two things. They need to, well, they need to do three things. They need to stop beating themselves with stupid mistakes, pre-snap penalties especially. They need to rush the passer better and an effective quarterback. You know, force fumbles, interceptions off tip balls. They need to get to the quarterback and affect the quarterback better than they do. And then they need to run the ball better. And that means, you know, getting after physically, getting a hat on a hat, moving the line of scrimmage, working on your combo blocks. If they do those three things, they played the Patriots this week. They play Houston on a short turnaround Thursday night at MetLife Stadium. And look, if you can find a way to win these two games and improve your pass rush with Hassan Reddick, you have a chance. You have a chance to – you get to four and five, it's hopeful thinking, but this isn't just hope. They've got talent to do it. Get to four and five, you're back in the race. Then you just got to – okay, then you got to go play. You got to go play and – Start winning division games against the Dolphins. You haven't played them yet. Got another game against Buffalo. Okay, that's what do I think. I think 
Hassan Reddick, if he makes a difference, it could really help this team right now. He's that type of player. All right, we saw a trade uh, happen, I guess, today. You know, Kansas City traded for DeAndre Hopkins. He doesn't look quite like the same player that we're used to seeing, but he's been playing with bad quarterbacks in Tennessee. Uh, Kansas City desperately needs a wide receiver. Uh, they lost Hollywood Brown the first game of the season. They lost Rasheed Rice for the season. Juju Smith-Schuster pulled a hamstring in the first quarter last week against San Francisco. And they're out there with Sky Moore, and I don't know what he is at this point. Xavier Worthy running certain type of routes and fly sweeps. Okay, McCall Hardman. They need a, a big-time X receiver that could go down the field, beat man coverage. Last week, nobody could beat Trent McDuffie. Um, or, I mean, uh, no, nobody could beat, you know, the, 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 the San Francisco corners. And so, you know, Mahomes right now is struggling. In fact, he's struggling so much. I mean, he's thrown the most interceptions in the league. Not all of them are his fault, but he's got eight, you know, um, and they're undefeated. They've got eight interceptions in six games, six touchdown passes. they got to improve their pass game. But what's remarkable is they, yeah, they're still undefeated at 6-0. and oh. But if you think about it, they now are running the ball more than they're throwing. They run it 189 times. They passed it 187 times. Now, they've had the lead in the fourth quarter like they did last week, and they ran the ball. So that's what you do. That's what Andy Reid does. But still, like I've seen Andy Reid 62% pass at the end of the season. Uh, he's north of 50-50 running it right now. They're a very good running team. Uh, Kareem Hunt's been excellent. Uh, Carson Steele's been good. Samaj P. Ryan and Mahomes. Like, they can run the ball. They need to throw it better than they are right now. And they know that the season's going to get tougher. Uh, the stretch will get tougher. And so the defense is carrying them. But it's a good move. Good move for DeAndre Hopkins to play with Mahomes. Uh, he'll be great in 50-50 jump balls, scramble drills. He'll be good. Uh, I think Kansas City improved themselves. Uh, the Jets are playing the New England Patriots in Foxborough. They have not swept the Patriots since 2000 since before the Tom era, Tom Brady era began. They have an excellent chance of doing it. But in order to do it, uh, you have to account for what Drake May has done in his two starts. Only Dan Marino and Drake May have thrown for five touchdown passes in 500 yards in their first two starts. He's got five touchdown passes. And I got to tell you, when I watch him right now, he's not content to check the ball down and take the easy completion. His touchdown throw uh, into the end zone to, uh, I don't know if it was DeMario, De, uh, DeMario Douglas or not. I think it was. But it's third and 16. Like, you know, he could have just checked it and got some yards, kicked a field goal. He threw a ball down the field, middle of the field to Hunter Henry. He could have easily checked it down the outside. You constantly see him attacking, which is encouraging. Because, honestly, their line is they're on their second team or third team center. They're on their third team left tackle, maybe their fourth team left tackle. They're not very good up front, uh, but he stands in there and makes big throws with a big arm, and he's aggressive. So hats off to Drake May for what he has accomplished and what he's doing so far. Uh, we all watched Tampa on Monday night lose to Baltimore badly. We saw Mike Evans go down with a hamstring pull. Uh, he had a chance for a second touchdown catch tonight, had his hands on the ball when he pulled his right hamstring, he's going to be out for a while. The way he pulled up, I don't, I'm not playing doctor here. The way he pulled up and the way he was hobbled, he's going to miss some games. You know, I would say a minimum of two, might be more. And, of course, they lost Chris Godwin, you know, for the season. Now, those two guys have 11 of Baker Mayfield's 18 touchdown passes. Like, they are receiver one and two on any given day, every day, for the last, since Godwin got there, it's been like that. Now, they've got a rookie in Jalen McMillan who looks really promising. Uh, he's been the slot receiver, but he certainly can play outside. He did at University of Washington. They've got Trey Palmer. They've got a couple guys there. Um, but and Kate Otten is coming on at tight end. And they're running the ball way better than anybody thought they might. They've got three legitimate running backs right now. Uh, but Baker's going to need help. So I would expect Tampa – the trade deadline is November 5th, so it's uh, literally less than two weeks away. I would expect Jason Light to be on the phone. Uh, they're 4-3, and three, tied with Atlanta for first place. 
I don't know if they can win the division right now with the receiving core that they have. Now, I know Mike Evans is coming back, so but we don't know how he's going to be and how long this is going to take. You can't afford to tread water right now. Um, so I would expect Tampa. And we've seen all these receivers move. You know, we just saw, obviously, Devontae and Amari and now, uh, you know, uh, D-Hop. So I would expect maybe Cooper Cup makes a lot of sense, honestly. Like, if he's out there and he's available, like some people are saying, you have to make the phone call. Uh, if you're Pittsburgh, you know, if you're Tampa, you have to make the phone call about Cooper. He was a third-round pick at Eastern Washington. He won the Triple Crown three years ago. Uh, most receptions, yards, touchdowns in the league. Um, caught the game-winning touchdown in the Super Bowl. Uh, Cooper Cup, if he's available, you have to call. You got to call less need with the Rams, and you got to see just what they're interested in getting for Cooper Cup if he's available. And then uh, I want to talk about the Jags. They're two and five. They beat uh, New England, uh, you know, in London last week. But when you look at this team right now, they go to New, they go to Green Bay this week, and then they come to Philly. They got a tough stretch in two weeks, but. <clears throat> If you look at Trevor Lawrence right now, like he's got solid quarterback play over the last three weeks. All right. He's averaging over 100 quarterback rating the last three weeks. He had 121 last week. He had 119 against Indy three weeks ago. Um, he's thrown five touchdowns, two interceptions. But if you look at the way the team is constructed, Brian Thomas is the best rookie receiver in this league. He is and only getting better. He runs by everybody. He caught a pass against Christian Gonzalez last week for, I don't know what it was, 52 yards. I mean, on a go route. Can't cover it any better. The guy is a great player. You got Christian Kirk, all right? Evan Ingram is back. Tank Bigsby's the starting running back. The offense line, Walker Little, left tackle right now, is been good. They've been running the ball better. They've got everything it takes to be a good offense right now. Now, they got to go to Green Bay, which leads the league in takeaways, and they're excellent on third downs. And they play three safeties. You know, this is, to me, this is Jacksonville season. Um, if they can win this game in Green Bay, tough opponent, well-coached football team with a great offense, defense will be challenged, and they have not been good defensively. But to me, this is a game that Trevor Lawrence has to show that, A, he got a new contract this year, number one pick, franchise quarterback, all right, Green Bay's got their franchise quarterback. Like, it's time to go really compete. Because, honestly, they can't get any better offensively, personnel-wise, than what they have. They've got the best 11 out there, and their depth is fine. So it's time. They they still struggle to get a yard when they need a yard. It's been a, a real problem how to gain a yard when they need to. It keeps showing up over and over and over again. Even last week, they, they got stuffed on fourth and one. So – I'm really interested because I think Jacksonville is going to play really well in Green Bay. And I don't know what the line on the game is or anything else like that. And then next week, they come to Philadelphia. Philadelphia is in Cincinnati this week. They're going to have their hands full against, you know, Joe Burrow for sure. Defensively, they'll have their hands full. I think the Eagles offense will be just fine. But this is – these games, like the, we're now in the middle of the seasons. Preseason's over, the juggling act, and whatever injuries you have, you have to learn to – overcome them if they're season ending or uh, you have to, there's no excuses. We're now week eight. All right. We're into the meat of the schedule. So if Jacksonville is going to be a team, it's going to be this week. If Philadelphia and Cincinnati are going to be players for the postseason, this is a big week between those two. I'm, I think Jacksonville is going to play really well. Green Bay is such a well-coached team. They need their best performance of the season to win the game. I think they're up to it. I really do. So, anyways, that's been the best football show. Uh, we'll be back here tomorrow live, uh, kind of previewing Thursday night's game and the week eight schedule because this is getting fun, folks. It's getting a lot of fun. San Francisco, Dallas on Sunday, which team is just going to, like, start this uh, downward spiral? Which team is going to come out of it? Anyways, that will be all about tomorrow. I uh, can't wait to join you. It's been the best football show. Thanks for joining me, everybody.